Hi, St. Anthony students and families. I'm happy to see you today. Today, we are going to talk about problem solving. We didn't have a chance to talk about problem solving much um, when we were having classes, so I wanted to talk about it today. And some of this is going to relate to the skills for learning. You might remember we talked about skills for learning at the beginning of the year, um, students did, and we talked a little bit about how to get um, problem solved and things like that with skills for learning in the classroom, but we're going to talk a little bit about the action steps today. So, and I'm going to be looking over at my notes sometimes, so that's what I'll be doing. So problem solving. Problem solving is a four-step process, okay? And you can use this at school, at home, during soccer practice, during your dance lessons, wherever you need to problem solve, because we will have to problem solve our whole lives. Our grown-ups problem solve, we problem solve. We problem solve at work, we problem solve at home, right? So there are four steps. So it, and it actually spells out step, S-T-E-P. So the first is the S, and that is say the problem without blame. Now, what do I mean by say the problem without blame? We talked about this, I think, at the beginning of the year. So we have to figure out what the problem is we're facing. What is the problem? We're going to use an example today. Let's say the example is you're at, I use this one a lot in class, you're at home, you want to play video games, your brother, sister, cousin want to play video games too, and there's one controller. We have to say the problem without blame. So what is the problem? Is the problem is your siblings a big meanie? No. Is the problem is remote controls are expensive and you can't figure out how to earn more money? No. The problem is we have one video controller and two people who want to play the game, right? That is the problem. Now, we are not blaming the other person. We're not saying, you always get to play the video game and I never do. And we're not saying, you're a big meanie. We're not name calling. We're not doing anything like that. We are saying the problem without blame. The problem in this case is we both want to play video games and we only have one controller, right? That's our S. Very good. Okay, the next step is T starts with T and it's think of solutions. Okay, we need to think of all the solutions we can come up with. So what would our solutions be? Let's see. Maybe I take a half an hour and play and you take a half an hour and play. Maybe we switch on and off depending on what's going on with the game. Maybe I play today and you play tomorrow, or you play today and I play tomorrow. Maybe we don't play video games at all. Maybe we go find something else to do, like play basketball or draw pictures together or paint or something. We have to think of all the different ways that we can solve the problem, okay? Now, does it solve the problem if I say, okay, the solution is I get to play video games anytime I want ever and you never get to? That is not a good solution, is it? That's not very fair. So we think of all the solutions we can come up with that are fair solutions. Again, let's try to do this without blame, okay? Let's try to do this and kind of take the emotions out of it and just think of all the different consequences or all the different solutions, sorry, that we can think of all the different ways we can solve this problem. So we have said the problem without blame, one controller, two kids want to play. Think of all the different solutions. We've talked about all the different ways we can solve this problem. The next one is E. We're doing S-T-E-P. Say the problem, think of solutions, explore consequences. Now, what do I mean by explore consequences? Well, a consequence is the result of a solution or a behavior, right? Like, let's see, if I decide to never do my homework, am I going to get a good grade? No. The consequence of not doing my homework is I don't get a good grade, right? Or if I don't clean up my room when I was told to, and my grown-up tells me to clean up my room and I don't do it, the consequence might be that I'm grounded and I don't get to play video games or I don't get to play with my friends outside, right? That's a consequence. So explore the consequences of the solutions. Let's say that we have decided, hmm, let's say you play for a half an hour and I play for a half an hour. What is the consequence of that? Well, the consequence is we both get a fair amount of time, right? We're sharing. It makes both of us happy, right? Because we both get to have equal time. So those are some consequences. Now, there might be some sad consequences too, or some consequences you don't really like. Like during your turn to play, I'm not going to be very happy, right? 
But during my turn to play, you might not be very happy. So it's kind of a fair consequence, isn't it? So we think of all the different consequences for our actions. We always should be doing that anyway, shouldn't we? So we say the problem without blame. We think of the solution. We explore the consequence. And the last step is P, S-T-E-P, right? Pick the best solution. What is the best solution, not just for me, but for everyone? What is the fair solution? So in this case, would the best solution be for me to play all day today and you to play all day tomorrow? Well, maybe not. That means you won't get to play today. You won't be very happy. I won't get to play tomorrow. I'll be very happy. And tomorrow, who knows what's going on? Maybe we'll have extra work we need to do. Maybe we'll be, it'll be nice outside and we'll be going outside and then you didn't get your turn. I'm not sure. So is the best solution that neither one of us play? Well, maybe it is. Maybe we can find something else to do that we would have more fun doing. Maybe the best solution is I play half an hour, you play half an hour. I play half an hour, you play half an hour. Maybe that's fair. Maybe that makes everybody happy. Maybe you can watch me while I'm playing and I can watch you and we can encourage each other. Maybe the best solution is none of us play. Maybe the best solution is we just keep going back and forth. Maybe the best solution is we find a game, a board game that we play. Or we do something together. We can both play together at the same time. I don't know what the best solution is. But we pick the best solution that is fair to everybody. Those are the four steps of problem solving. S-T-E-P. Remember that. Okay. S, say the problem without blame. We always try to do that when we have any type of problem or conflict, don't we? We think of solutions. Think of all the different solutions you can come up with. And it might be helpful to write them down, too. Sometimes we write things down to help us remember things. Explore the consequences. That's our E. What is going to happen if I make this decision, if we handle things this certain way, if we use this solution? And we P. We pick the best solution that is possible for everybody. Now, sometimes you'll pick a solution and it won't work out and it won't make you happy or it won't make someone else happy. And then we think, well, you know what? Everyone messes up. We're going to go back to the drawing board and we're going to try something new. We're going to try something different, right? Those are the problem solving steps. I kind of went through those super fast. And I know in class we would have examples and videos and things. And I'm sorry we don't have that right now. But those are the four steps for problem solving. So homework for you, for Mrs. Baker. I want you to do some problem solving, okay? I want you to use these four steps over the next week or so, and your parent or grown-up can shoot me an email or let the teachers know or put on Dojo what kind of problems you guys solved. I'm very anxious to hear if you've used this, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!